Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on scaffolding skills for HSC science success. Uh, my name's Jenna, and I am a publisher at Oxford University Press. So I'd like to begin by um, giving you an overview of what we'll be discussing today, and then I'll introduce our presenters. So today we're going to discuss some feedback from the HSC examiners reports from the 2019 examiners and pick up on some common themes and discuss how they can be supported from stage four. We'll then be explaining how these skills can be scaffolded all the way through so that once students arrive at stage six, they're fully prepared. And we'll finish by giving you an overview of Oxford's new Insight Science series. And we'll have some time at the end for question in, questions and answers. So our presenters today are Melinda Messery. She is currently at St Andrews Cathedral College, uh, sorry, Cathedral School, and she is a consultant for the AIS New South Wales Science Professional Learning and Advisory Committee. We are also joined by Maura Solomon, who is an assistant head of science at MLC and is also on the AIS New South Wales Science Professional Learning Advisory Committee, and Timothy Sloan, who is head of science at Concord High School and has experience as a HSC exam marker. So I will hand over to them. Thanks, uh, Jenna. Um, so um, thank you very much, Jenna, for that kind um, introduction. So yes, I'm the um, current acting head of department at St Andrews Cathedral School in Sydney. Um, I'm also um, an assessment consultant for the International Baccalaureate Organisation um, and an experienced HSC chemistry marker. So this is a very familiar diagram to all of our science teachers. Um, however, I wanted to draw your attention to the very centre of the circle, and that is the working scientifically skills. It's really important that we ensure that working scientifically skills underpins the knowledge and understanding areas. So therefore, when we design an assessment task and therefore the subsequent lessons, we really need to start with those working scientifically skills. And then from there, we hook on the knowledge and understanding. Here you can see um, some mapping of the working scientifically skills. And as a group of authors, part of our original planning was to work backwards from stage six and to map out those working scientifically skills all the way back to stage four. And in particular, we looked at the progression, um, not just of the skills, but also those key words or the verbs that are being used. So this mapping really assisted us in developing questions within the student book and the skills and activity books and also helped us to ensure that there was differentiation that appeared across each of the stages from stages four to five. Hello, I'm Maura and I'm um, the Assistant Head of Science at MLC and work with Mel on the committee. Um, have been a senior HSC chemistry marker and last year I was on the, um, I was marking the science extension paper, which was a totally different ball game. Um, so I'm going to, I was involved in writing the skills booklet or parts of the skills booklet. Um, and so that was my contribution to this project. Um, so these are some pain points from uh, HSC examiners across all the sciences. Um, in the questioning and predicting, it's about explicitly outlining how the dependent variable will be measured. Um, if there's, so it needs to be stated, it needs to be talked about how the dependent variable is measured and that's that's something that even in stage six um, we're finding that students are struggling with um, in how they're obtaining their actual data. Um, and the next one was the planning and conducting investigations. Um, so the aim in the aim of an experiment and a hypothesis, they're different things, so the hypothesis is an explanation based on scientific reasoning and the aim is to be able to um, it's the purpose of the investigation um, also we found that a lot of students can identify a trend but can't give a reason for a trend or a relationship in data and they're not exposed to different types of data usually as well so um, they get they come across data and they can't actually give cause and effect explanations um, one of the main syllabus dot points is justifying uh, why they need to be kept constant. Um, a lot of students also are writing things like keeping using the same equipment, which doesn't really make a valid experiment um, because you would assume that equipment is um, calibrated. 
Um, so they need to understand how controlled variables actually change the nature of the experiment. Um, and accuracy, reliability, and validity are big key things, in, not only in first-hand investigations, but in second-hand investigations as well. How do you assess reliability of secondary resources and validity and accuracy? And I think the students use these words interchangeably without actually understanding what they mean. So um, there's, a, there's a move to build this understanding um, as part of this process in preparation for the working scientifically skills in stage six. Over to me. Thanks, Maura. My name is Tim Sloan, Head Teacher Science at Concord High School. Um, certainly been involved in HSC Biology as uh, marker, senior marker, and also through the standards uh, setting operation, aka judging. Uh, and certainly as part of this uh, new experience with um, uh, with Oxford, uh, I guess in, involved as primarily the bio uh, author um, through both stage four and five. So continuing with that theme of looking through those, as we call them, the pain points of the HSC, a, a reminder that this is a collation uh, in large part uh, across each of the stage six um, courses. So some of them uh, will relate more to, for example, physics uh, more so than it does biology. but. Um, uh, you'll see here where students uh, continue to have uh, issues constructing graphs, uh, not using a ruler or in inability to draw nice clean axes and uh, certainly having issues still around uh, the concept of accuracy and how to correctly set up uh, the axes um, and also with uh, producing uh, a line of best fit. Um, Still uh, an area of concern for me at stage six, students are still struggling to identify independent and dependent variables. And as they apply to processing and analyzing uh, data, whether those variables go on, uh, well, independent variable on the x-axis or uh, and the y, uh, on the dependent variable on the y-axis there. Um, again, uh, issues around tables where students are still having issues at the stage six level with correctly uh, rounding to the appropriate number of decimal places. And that then continues through to uh, issues like uh, having the, uh, the appropriate setup in terms of independent, dependent variable, and what to actually include in each of the table headings uh, and cells. Uh, using the correct units, uh, which is what I've just mentioned, for example, our students, um, I guess more so in physics here, talk about uh, uh, mixing up the, whether to put speed in kilometres per hour or metres per second um, and when and when not to use each of those, uh, that correct uh, scientific terminology and units. And then finally, um, perhaps more so physics, a touch of chemistry, uh, students are struggling with performing mathematical equations and how to cor correctly apply the formulas. Uh, moving on to the all important communication. Uh, again, I've always found this, uh, uh, it's interesting how we seem to have these conversations myself personally as a head of uh, department and also just uh, within my own classroom, uh, the conversations we have around variables and then how to communicate uh, succinctly in an appropriate scientific uh, manner. Um, we, we, I start those conversations from year seven onwards and uh, continue to find year in, year out that students are struggling with some of these key scientific skills. Uh, in this case, um, students have struggled with uh, the writing up correct procedures uh, with the appropriate um, material contained within it. And a really important one across all the sciences, I know it's a biology, biology example here, but students really uh, need to take that leap into using what we refer to as the science meta language um, rather than using self uh, reproduction or non sexual uh, reproduction. Start using those, uh, th those, I guess, that higher order language associated with each of the stage six courses. And one of the key descriptors uh, for those that are, are across the course performance descriptors to get to that uh, higher band six level, uh, they need to be able to communicate succinctly and logically using the correct terminology. Um, those that have marked of experience, uh, what we might refer to as the verbal diarrhea, where there's all, all the correct knowledge is there, but they put it all down in a three page essay and it's near guaranteed to uh, basically take marks off them where they could have written in a nice, uh, concise manner. So I'm going to hand over to Mel now. Uh, thanks for that, Tim. So I think what's really important that's come out of this is that we um, really need to be scaffolding these skills a little bit better in stages four and five to um, be able to um, better prepare them for what is going to be coming up to them coming up in stage six. 
Um, and I think um, Maura will answer more to this towards the end of our presentation when we look in particular at the, um, those skills um, and activity um, booklets. So what I'd like to um, now just start the conversation um, is to look at, well, what, are, what do, do the textbooks um, have to highlight? So the very first thing is um, complete syllabus coverage. So every single outcome in stages four and five syllabus are addressed in the relevant student books. These outcomes are taught explicitly through content, questions and investigations. And you'll find in each chapter opener uh, we state the outcomes addressed in that chapter, so you can very quickly at a glance see which outcomes are being covered. The working, scientific, working scientifically skills are explicitly taught through skill builders and through um, the skills and activity books, which we'll also show you examples of um, later on. The second one is looking at um, a pathway to HSC success because I think you know at the end of it end of the day we're setting these students up in stages four and five for success in stage six so later on in this presentation you'll see the questions that are included in each of the spreads are differentiated all the way from recall and explain through to create and evaluate this ensures that there is an embedded differentiation. Um, questions are also asked using the NESA keywords so that students understand how to answer, for example, an interpret question from stage four and can carry this skill through to stage six. You'll see examples of how skill builder questions are also included in each of the spreads to target working scientifically outcomes as well. This ensures that there's a comprehensive coverage of questions in each of the sections. Think, uh, over to me now. So uh, now we're just going to look at uh, one of the third, I think, key features of the new Oxford uh, resource pack. Um, the resources are certainly, um, i found, uh, through this process significantly easier to use and more accessible for, uh, for all stakeholders, students, teachers, and with a few additions in terms of the lab technicians, uh, which you'll see shortly. Um, what we refer to as the, the section-based approach and um, what that's looking at is making sure that the books are significantly easier to navigate. Um, where each of the sections of the book cover one key concept uh, per, uh, per in, in large part per lesson. Uh, obviously, that does depend upon the, the the time frame of each of our lessons, and is very much school dependent. And we'll certainly talk you through this approach shortly in terms of uh, what this physics physically looks like within the textbooks. Uh, the resources are certainly um, uh, designed with a view to being nice, clear, uh, concise, and with in, in large part what I'd call instructional uh, language throughout, creating accessibility for each of the, the students, no matter what their level or ability within the classroom. Uh, and in large part, uh, it's a one-stop shop for off offering up uh, the inbuilt differentiation, which is certainly an all-important all uh, concept within teaching uh, today and uh, very much mapped to the syllabus. So uh, by using this resource, certainly teachers um, are assured that uh, the content that they're delivering via this resource pack is mapped to uh, the syllabus. Uh, the differenti oppor differentiation opportunities um, occur through the way of information is explained uh, in both a combination of writing and through a very nice visual representation. And then finally, um, one of the uh, key features I've certainly found of the previous uh, incarnation of the Oxford text and in the new uh, edition coming your way soon is that the, there's very much an engaging uh, design which helps the students to stay focused uh, due to the actual layout uh, and engaging nature of the content and uh, associated resources. So next up, uh, certainly one of the key features is that uh, the students are supported very much through um, the experience of laboratory work that and the SRP, which is embedded within both the stage four and stage five uh, resource pack. Um, it offers a full coverage of practical science activities through, uh, it's, it's through a genuine combination of what we refer to as investigations, which uh, take students through the experiment uh, process. There's also a range of different challenges embedded within the textbook, which ask students to very much think critically and 
uh, in uh, look uh, certainly a key focus within education in, in a STEM manner, uh, and we also have skill la uh, skill lab activities uh, which teach a specific uh, science practical skill uh, or a combination of practical skills, and we'll certainly be taking you through uh, I guess the nuts and bolts of that very shortly when we uh, highlight the textbook. Um, each of the investigations challenges skills lab is supported by an uh, accompanying worksheet, a risk assessment, and lab tech notes, which certainly makes it, as I mentioned earlier, uh, really accessible to all uh, parties or stakeholders involved in the the preparation of those um, of those practicals and skills component. Uh, there's a range of mock answers and data sets provided for each of the practical activities. And the logic behind that is it gives uh, it teaches a sense of, um, I guess, point of comparison and also a point of reference for students that perhaps have missed that particular lesson and you can then provide them with that data set and then allow them to perform, I guess, uh, in essence, a, a mock write-up of the experiment based on that uh, data set provided. And uh, just to finish up, there's a dedicated chapter within each of the Stage 4 and 5 Textbooks are on are dedicated to the student research search project, which, as you're as you're aware, is a man, mandated uh, component of the stage four and five uh, course, and it will support uh, teachers in supporting the students to make sure that it is a quality uh, SRP project. Uh, I think it's over to Maura now. Um, so part of this uh, resource is that teachers are provided with a range of additional support materials. So there are differentiated worksheets, um, teaching notes, assessment tasks, and answers to all questions. Um, obviously, as writers, we had an we had intentions for the questions. So um, we became Bob back a book uh, with all the answers. Um, so hopefully, that that is a good resource for teachers. Um, the Oxford O Book Assess has teachers have access to a range of resources which help support the student learning and, engage in, and engagement. Um, there are teaching notes which offer lesson plan ideas and activities, as well as a clear guide to which resources will help that section of the course. There will also be class tests and online quizzes. In addition to this, there are differentiated worksheets uh, to support all students and all abilities. Um, and the OBOOK content can be assignable to students at the discretion of each teacher. Uh, they, it's really useful to have these resources because it's good to see, to get a variety of different types of questions, different exams, different worksheets. Um, and the differentiated worksheets are great because within a class you can use, teach the same content and give different students different different worksheets depending on their learning ability. So I think these resources are really valuable um, as for teachers um, to, to use in their classrooms and as part of their teaching and learning programs. So thanks, Maura. Um, so the very first chapter of both of the te uh, textbooks is a working scientifically chapter. Now, these are standalone chapters and um, it's intended to use as a reference or a toolkit that students can just really just dip in out of as they need. It has a section dedicated to each of the working scientifically skills that um, directly targets the skill without any knowledge and understanding that contextualizes it. Um, it covers areas such as, you know, which is a type, which type of graph should be used with particular data sets? Um, how do you identify different variables? Um, what are the various uh, parts of the scientific report? How to write a risk assessment? How to prevent, um, how to present information and how to communicate clearly? It also explains each of the NESA keywords so that students can answer the questions correctly in other parts of the book. Um, and really, by using this chapter, you, we can prepare students for each of the stages and we can scaffold their ability moving through to um, stage six. All right, thanks, Mel. Uh, as mentioned, uh, we, we now get to get into the, the, the really exciting stuff, I have to say, which is the actual resources uh, themselves. Um, as promised, uh, I'm going to take you through some of that, uh, the key features of the book before I hand uh, back to the other presenters. Um, I'm going to take you through what we refer to as that section-based approach, uh, the layout of the textbooks, where each section addresses one specific uh, concept and is roughly or look, approximately uh, dedicated to one to two lesson uh, timeframe. 
I'll highlight the, the check your learning and questions which at the end of each of these uh, sections, which are very much aligned to uh, Bloom's taxonomy, which uh, we'll all be familiar with. And then I'll also address the skill builder component, which uh, again, just really gives you us, the teachers and the students, that opportunity to focus on the all important skills, which you saw at the start of the presentation. It continues to be an issue that students struggle through right uh, through to stage six. Okay, so uh, basically what we have here is, and I'll, I'll first start by saying that uh, biology, as mentioned, is my strong point, but uh, I guess more than comfortable with the stage uh, for physics uh, seen here. Um, but uh, the same approach is actually consistent between each of the, the, the different worlds, as we call them, uh, within the textbook. Um, so each chapter is broken into uh, what we refer to as the sections, and there's approximately 10 of these sections per chapter, and that is in, uh, is, can vary slightly, just in large part, depending upon the actual nature of the outcome and what component uh, of the syllabus uh, it's addressing. Um, each section is introduced with a concept statement. So in this case here, you can see at the top of the page 2.1, uh, force is a push or pull. And that gives a real sense of the direction of where this particular section uh, and the lesson is heading as we move through uh, these two, the, the, the double page layout. Um, and uh, throughout the text key words, if we move down on the left hand side there to the second blue uh, box, the key terms uh, are basically have a glossary associated through the through the um, I guess the sides of the pages where students can instantly uh, access what these I guess the meta languages I mentioned uh, some of these words will be quite new to the students and that provides them that immediate access to, uh, so they don't have to necessarily ask the teacher for clarification that's just the one-stop shop where it's all there very much in front of the students um, I'll certainly take you through other components as we move through the next slide, but just jumping now over to the right hand page, you, um, what we have here is at the end of each section there is a check your learning and the skills builder set of questions and they're very much structured against Bloom's taxonomy scaffolded to really allow all students to access content and certainly uh, provides extension activities uh, with a skills builder component actually addressing specific skills uh, associated with that area of the course. Again, this is just a continuation of, of that uh, physics chapter. Um, it's note, it's introduced again with that concept statement. In this case, uh, 2.2, .2, an unbalanced force causes, uh, uh, causes uh, changes and also those uh, key terms that are, appear in the glossary uh, within the margins. However, I guess the focus on this particular page there is on the top right page. You'll see uh, labelled with the red box just to indicate uh, the signposting, uh, as we call them uh, in this case, to a specific uh, challenge. And the signposting is very much significant. Um, as Morris said, it's uh, Bob Akron in back of the book. That just highlights to both staff and students that they can access that particular activity at the back of the book um, without disrupting the flow of this particular lesson. So that could very much form uh, the uh, flow on into that next lesson where we've done the theory and now want to move on to either the challenge or the practical depending upon uh, what activity is signposted within uh, the margins there. And then finally as well over on the far right there we've got that icon just highlighting that there is, that there is a specific worksheet associated with this area uh, of the syllabus that the students uh, can access and uh, engage with and provide for the students as required. Uh, then finally from me, yep, so again just note that uh, section uh, descriptor up there 2.3, again take a message, forces can be added uh, together and under each of those section uh, titles we have the, this uh, blue box dedicated to the key ideas. I guess what we might call the take home messages from uh, the lesson. So as we do those sort of recap of the lesson or the exit slips, for example, you might want to have some of your questions uh, specifically addressing each of those key ideas or take home messages. And then finally, uh, just another section that hasn't appeared on those earlier two slides, uh, the nature of this uh, particular um, outcome required or deem that uh, we include a worked example, which really does uh, scaffold uh, student and assist them through the, I guess, the key steps involved in the process um, to actually address that specific skill before they then go on and, and um, attempt that worksheet tag just above that there and then move on through to the checking their understanding and also the skills builder at the bottom of the page. 
Uh, thanks for that. Um, so this is the spread that you get at the end of each chapter, and it's the you know the very typical um, chapter review questions. Um, just talking to each of those uh, three blue boxes. So the very first section is you'll find um, a bank of multiple choice questions. Um, again, preparing students for stage six exams, where of course I have to answer multiple choice. Um, but then throughout um, the rest of the questions, we have the use of these NESTA keywords to help um, with student responses. And it is um, differentiated, starting with recall and explain, going all the way through to those higher order verbs of evaluate and create. So really honing in on those critical thinking skills. And then there's typically um, what we call a go further section. And this is a bank of questions that really offer um, extension and um, higher level um, differentiation for, um, for those students. Over the page there, um, you'll also notice at the end of each chapter, there are research questions. So in this section, um, it really can prompt students to think about some areas for their SRP, for example, um, or it could be used um, for extension activities in class. Um, there's also um, a reflect area down the bottom, and this really encourages students to uh, take charge of their own learning, and they can conduct this self-assessment um, if they indicate that they need more assistance in a particular area, it actually directs them back to um, a particular page in the, in the book that um, discusses that particular outcome. And they can go back and they perhaps can do some of the questions um, that um, Tim just spoke about earlier in those other spreads. Uh, okay, back to me. Um, so here's my friend Bob. Uh, so we're at the back of the book now. Um, so. I mentioned in my uh, earlier slides uh, how we had those challenges, skills, practical activities or investigations signposted at the top of uh, the page or the double spread. And so that is then referring you to the back of the book where you will be met uh, with uh, pages such as, as those that appear in front of you. On the left hand side, uh, we've got the skills lab and the skills lab um, practical introduces those lab activities targeting specific aspects of the conducting uh, the, our scientific investigations. Uh, in this case, the students are exploring measuring forces and uh, practical actually addresses multiple skill outcomes uh, across planning and conducting and the processing and analyzing data. And then on the top right, 2.2, uh, designing the ball whacker. Um, and what that about, that's again, one of the challenges as opposed to the practical activities. And in this case, um, it's genuinely introducing STEM activities and asking students to consider and design uh, their own investigations, which they may or may not then go on to conduct. And it's certainly hope that these, um, these challenges will encourage students uh, to think critically and problem solve as they work through the various activities. And whilst I have the, this slide up in front of me, just note the colour differences. Um, they are, uh, again, part of the signposting at the front of the book as to whether they will be practical activities, for example, or the challenges um, which we, we may address uh, as we move forward into question time. And then finally from me, here we have one of the colour-coded investigations that will be, again, signposted uh, as you move through the actual content component of the textbooks. Um, some key features that I want to draw your attention to in this particular one, the investigations are designed to provide students with uh, those experiment style activities that takes them through the scientific process for very much from start uh, to finish. Uh, and if uh, you look up there top right though, uh, top right of the page there, uh, we have uh, lab tech notes, which very much provides uh, the lab techs with all the equipment, that, the necessary equipment to run this particular investigation. There's an associated risk assessment as well that is becoming, uh, as, I guess as they always have, but certainly becoming more and more of a focus of our day to day uh, just to avoid any any issues. So again, it really is a one stop shop for each of these different activities and all the associated um, documents and skill sets around it. Um, over to me now. So um, each chapter has each chapter in the book has a student research uh, project built into it. 
Um, so the Student Research Project is a standalone reference chapter. It acts as a guide for the Student Research chapter, uh, Student Research Project, uh, which includes choosing a topic, conducting research safely and accurately, uh, managing time, working groups, and communicating findings. Um, there was a really great question about uh, how we can best use the Stage Five Student Research Project to develop first-hand investigation skills. Um, in my, when I was working on the skills booklet, I targeted different skills in um, in each activity. So I'll talk a little bit more about that as I talk as I talk through the um, skills booklet. Um, so these booklets, uh, these skills and activities booklets, are designed to be a standalone from the textbook, so that they can be used. They don't need to be used in conjunction with the textbook. So what I've tried to do is put in different practice and different um, investigations, uh, different to the to the textbook, so that if there is an overlap, that there's no overlapping practice and things like that. So each each chapter contains um, it targets specifically an aspect of each of the working scientifically skills. Um, so there's uh, working scientifically four through to nine. Um, so each there's a chapter on it, there's an activity for each working scientifically, and at the start of every chapter is a literacy builder. So um, there's a there's one on vocabulary, one on writing, one on comprehension. Um, so again, there's a variety of activities to build literacy and to understand um, the scientific words that are used as part of that topic. Uh, the skills labs uh, have chapters um, that have practical activities and. Um, yeah, so each each chapter is based on different things. So the first one is making predictions. So they're targeted skills and they've pulled out aspects of each of the working scientifically skills. Um, what I've done as well is I've incorporated some stage six concepts, but I've tried to uh, map them as um, skills activities in those uh, in those worksheets. Um, so there's a focus on uh, writing a method or a focus on preparing materials or a focus on writing a risk assessment or reliability, um, running a reliable investigation or even a secondary um, reliable investigation using secondary sources. And I've really tried to scaffold those and give definitions of key key aspects and how to build um, that understanding in those, in those areas. Um, at the end of every chapter is a uh, skills builder. So what that does is it consolidates the the skills that were um, developed in that chapter. So for so back to the SRP question, uh, for example, if you don't want them to write a method but identify variables so they can highlight um, uh, control variables, dependent variables, and independent variables, or if there's a big focus on reliability of data, it would be evaluating um, the reliability and um, validity of data in that skills builder um, worksheet. So um, the skills builders I try to create as many as uh, a piece. So there is research; they have to write up a, a prac. Um, and write up an investigation and evaluate their results. But there's a different focus on different things depending on which skills were built in each chapter. So I hope that answers your question. Um, with every with every SRP, you can focus on different aspects of dif uh, of the working scientifically skills and build on them as you go. Hi, thanks, Maura. Um, my name is Sandra McLaughlin. I'm a member of the New South Wales secondary team, along with Catherine Stevenson and Callie James. Um, and I'm just going to run through some of the options and uh, the digital resources. So the textbooks that we publish in New South Wales are accompanied by additional digital resources. They're available on our cloud-based um, platform, which we call Oxford Digital. The digital resources are the Student O-Book Assess and Teacher O-Book Assess. And I'll just briefly explain what these are and some of their features. So O-Book refers to the digital version of the textbook, which comes with note-taking and highlighting functions, as well as a link to the Oxford Dictionary. And Assess is our online assessment resource. Um, Assess has multiple choice quizzes, which are auto-marked for students and results are visible to the students immediately after they finish their quizzes. Um, the quiz results also feed back to the teacher's mark book so that you're able to track um, students' knowledge and understanding as they progress through the content. 
Um, this slide shows some of the digital resources available on the uh, student OBook Assess and or teacher OBook Assess. So uh, teacher notes obviously available for teachers. Um, answers to all of the questions in the textbooks, they're available to teachers only. They can be shared with your students if you choose to, but they're not available on the student OBook Assess um, as one of the student resources. Practical worksheets um, for each investigation challenge or skills lab, which are the sections that Tim spoke about at the back of the book. Uh, lab tech notes, risk assessments, um, we have mock data as well for each of those practical activities. There are video tutorials, which are a fantastic thing for uh, students who aren't able to be in the classroom or the lab. Uh, there are revision notes for students and we've also got a um, link to Quizlet quizzes and differentiated worksheets um, to support all of your students regardless of their ability and these results feed back to the teacher's mark book again so that their teachers can, um, can track your students. Okay, so here we can see a couple of screenshots um, of the Teacher O-Book Assess. Um, the page at the back is what the um, textbook looks like digitally, which is the same as what it looks like um, online, uh, sorry, in the, in the print book. And then the front screenshot that you can see, um, you can see some of those resources down the bottom, the teacher notes, student book questions, student book answers, and the PRAC worksheets. Uh, the Teacher O-Book Assess contains all of the resources which are contained in the Student O-Book Assess, including a digital version of the textbook, as well as additional material to support teachers such as course planners, teaching programs, lesson plans, you've got all of the answers, as I said earlier, um, risk assessments, etc. And there are also printable and editable class tests with answers for every chapter. Um, from the Teacher O-Book Assess, also teachers are able to assign work to students and track their progress using MarkBook. So some sample content is available now and hopefully uh, you've all um, been able to see some, um, sample chapters from the two textbooks. Um, if you haven't, please let us know or visit the um, web address at the bottom of that screen. The student workbook sample pages will be online tomorrow morning. It does say available now, but give us another 12 hours or so and they will be there. And we will very soon have some dashboard samples, so you'll see those additional resources. So the purchasing options are shown here. Um, the first one is the student book, which is the textbook, plus O-Book Assess. So each of the textbooks have a code printed inside, which gives um, access to the student O-Book Assess for two years. Um, so that's $89.95. And then for schools wanting digital access only, um, if you're a book list school, you'd be looking at the student O-Book Assess, which is $69.95, and that's for the two years access. That's when the students per make the purchase themselves. For schools where you have a text hire style arrangement and you want digital access for every student, you'll choose the multi, um, which is that next one down, the $79.95. So that's when the school purchases for their students to have access to the digital resources. The teacher O-Book Assess um, is listed there also, uh, and that is a one-off um, payment. So it's not uh, like the other ones, which are two years access. Um, this is ongoing access um, for teachers and uh, if your school book lists um, Insight Science for your students or if you purchase class sets, you will receive that as um, a complimentary thing. Um, then we move down to the Student Skills and Activity book um, and they are a write-in workbook for $34.95 and if you're looking at both the student book um, plus a book assess plus the skills and activity books. Um, the student pack is the most uh, economical way to go. It is cheaper if you buy it as a pack and that is $114.95. So it gives you two years digital access, the student textbook and the skills and activity book. Um, and I think I will hand over to Kristen. Thank you very much. Thanks for that, Sandra. Um, so I've been looking through the, the Q&A, people have been sending through some, some great questions. Um, 
to introduce myself, I'm Kristen. I'm a science publisher as well at Oxford University Press. I work with Gemma and um, have been very lucky to be working with Maura, Tim and Melinda this year. Um, so yeah, there have been some great questions that have been coming through already. Andrew's, I don't know if it's the same Andrew that's been asking these questions, but there is two questions from an Andrew that are great. Um, the first one is, what suggestions do you have for helping students understand the difference between reliability, accuracy and validity? And I thought I could throw that one to Maura. Um, I think it's just practice and uh, so it's become, it's making the definite, being very clear about the definitions and differentiating between what reliability, accuracy and validity is. Um, giving students different types of data to assess reliability, um, to assess the accuracy of the data and the validity of the data um, as, and as well secondary resources. So it's not just primary uh, first-hand investigations but also in secondary resources. So um, you can set many tasks about um, different different information and different sources of information or different data sets where they can look at the reliability of the data, how the how the um, data was collected, was it accurate, is it a valid investigation, is it a valid secondary resource. So I think it is, it, it is about just exposing your students to those terms, um, being clear on the definitions and defining that every time you do an activity and say we're looking at the reliability, what does reliability mean, um, how do we assess reliability of data and it is, it is just practice. So it is in every investigation, in every first-hand investigation that you do, get your students to talk about the reliability, even if they only do it once and they haven't done the repeat trials, they can still talk about that it's not a reliable investigation because they haven't done the repeat trials. So I think it is just exposing them to the to the to the wording, to the and uh, putting it in context and um, practicing different different types of information. Um, I hope that's helpful. <laughs> Great, thank you. Sorry, also Melinda and Tim, you're welcome to, to, to jump in if you have anything to add. Um, uh, no, Maura's done well. <laughs> yeah, well that's oh, pretty but uh, moving on to another question um, from Anonymous, do you include PBL in your textbook or just the SRP? Um, yeah, so I think I'll, I'll just quickly answer that one um, as one of the authors um, of the textbook. Um, so PBL or project project-based learning is more of a, a teaching methodology, um, whereas the SRP is a NESA requirement. So there are the SRP is um, explicit um, in the textbook um, as a as SRP chapter um, and also within the working scientifically chapter. Um, but I suppose if you like to use uh, PBL in your classroom, you can use a lot of those um, research questions that are at the back of each of the chapters um, and there's also some ideas um, on experiments that um, students can design for themselves um, and so you can as a teacher um, you um, use that as stimulus um, to then create um, a project-based learning um, mini unit um, for your class um, but because PBL is, is more a teaching method um, rather than a, a, a necessary requirement, um, the, that terminology is not used in the textbook. Great, thanks Belinda. Um, one question that we had about skill builders earlier, um, and I'm not sure if this is perhaps something that Jenna wants to answer, um, it's just about how the skill builders work. The skill builders are part of the, the check your learning um, in each of the sections, so for every check your learning there is a skill builder that accompanies with it and it's mapped to a specific skill. So for example, it might be a questioning predicting skill and we would, we would scaffold it by giving students a little think hint as well. Um, did Jenna or, or Tim or, or Maura or Melinda have anything to add on skill builders at all? Um, was that the skill builders in the skills and activity book or in the... Uh, in the student book, sorry Maura. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Lots of skills. Yeah, um, I think the skill builders are really um, quite interesting um, 
in the in the textbook because not only is it mapped back to the working scientifically um, skills, but it's contextualised within the content area. So. Um, if you're programming and you utilize, utilizing um, Insight Science as one of your um, main resources, you can look to focus on particular skills, uh, working scientifically skills um, in your program and use those skill builders um, to help to um, build capacity um, in those particular um, working scientifically skills. So it's a really handy tool, um, I think, not just from a uh, teaching and learning perspective, but also from um, a programming perspective and, and which skills you're going to um, particularly concentrate on um, in that particular unit of work. And then obviously then supplementing that um, with the skills labs um, where you're looking again at um, particular um, skills within the skills labs of you know calculating and measuring etc so there's lots of different skills but i think um, those skill builders are really quite um, quite unique thanks for that uh, explanation mel that was really good did tim or more you didn't have anything you wanted to add on to that uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll just add one thing as one of the certainly as uh, Jenna and uh, I early on in the discussions um, by chance um, one of the key things I was interested in doing at the faculty level was uh, spending more time dedicated to mapping out the skills within our programs I, I think it's fair to say shoot me down if you disagree uh, everyone um, that we tend to through the programming process spend more time focused on those knowledge and understanding components in terms of our registrations and so forth uh, and we do the working scientifically skills through our various investigations practicals group work individual work etc um, but I don't know it's given uh, due course throughout and I, I guess that's seen uh, through those pain points that we saw early on in the best investigation and certainly every attempt was made and um, throughout this process to make sure that those skill builders and other various activities through the resource pack were addressing those uh, skills, which um, tends to be, I think, fair, uh, reasonable to say a, a weak area for students across the state from stage four through to stage six. Great, and I think we just had another, another question come in. Um, I'm anonymous. <laughs> Maura said that the work in the skills pool prepares them for year 11, 12 content. Is this work listed as extension? Sure. Um, uh, it's not extension. The, the focus is on the skills. So it's it, they're exposed to content in stage six, but the focus is on developing skills. So for example, um, I've given, I've put in the cathode ray tubes to talk about, um, but it's talking about observations about the nature of electrons when we're talking about atomic theory. Um, so that's, that's stage six content about how the cathode ray tubes work. But the observation is something that they can observe um, in stage four and five and draw and make predictions about the structure of the atom. Um, so the focus, so that, that was a making predictions uh, activity. Um, also things like um, trends in the periodic table, I've put in ionization energy, for example, but I've given a description, but it's about looking at the graph and interpreting a graph that's not a line graph and looking at that, that information on the graph. So there is, there is stuff that is stage six um, concepts, but it's not the focus is on the skills. Um, but it does prepare them for stage six because they're, they're then exposed to those ideas. Um, and when they get to year 11 and 12 chemistry, they have a little bit of an understanding of what, what those things mean. Um, so it's not, uh, yeah, so the, the focus is on the, the building the skills, um, not on the content. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm just going to also add to that, Maura, um, in the textbook as well, you'll see a lot of um, stage six content in the um, extension and in the, the sort of go further and in the research tasks, but they're positioned from a stage four and five perspective. So it's starting to get them um, exposed to that. Um, so also, again, looking at ionisation energies, etc. So and trends in the periodic table. Um, so, um, yeah, again, that also appears in a textbook in a sense that they're expo being exposed to that content, but they're not actually having to understand the content. Um, that's not the, the premise here. It's about using it as a, um, as a 
as a launch pad into those stage four and five skills. I think we, I think as well in in developing these resources, we really try to think outside the box and yeah. we, we try to do something different that wasn't in, like we, we've been teaching in quite a long time and, you know, we have access to a lot of resources. So we really tried to do something that was different and beyond the scope of the syllabus, but also targeting specific areas. Um, so that's why there's, there is that, that extra, I guess, conceptual um, content in there. Um, yeah. Does that answer the question? <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I think it does. <laughs> um, so I think we might actually be running out of time. Jenna, did you want to send in your... Sure can. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Great. Thanks for those questions and answers. They were really good. If you'd like, you can contact your education consultant for any questions or more information on what you've heard today. Otherwise, thank you everyone for coming. That Hopefully you got something out of that and hopefully see you again. <laughs>